Okay, so why do I have a composite television display with a bunch of A's with this little extra long part of the A here? This is a video I'm making to remind myself what I'm doing. So this is part of the Retcom 87 project that I've been working on for many years with my students. It's based on this W65C265SXB development board by Western Design Center and I've made some add-on boards for it. And one of them has a sound chip. One of them lets you talk to Sega Master System, that and the Atari 2600 joysticks. This has the TMS 9118, which is actually a variant of the better known, I think it's 9918. Anyway, it's the set of Texas Instruments graphics chips. And we're displaying a bunch of A's using code written in assembly for this chip. Now, the main thing I want to do is remind myself about how I got this going, because for some reason, the Easy SXB program, while it works on my old Macintosh that I have here, both of these are Apple Silicon, but this one's a little bit older. It works on this one, but it doesn't work on this one. It says it connects to the board, but then it doesn't do anything. And I don't know why. And I can't find the power supply for this one. So I'm making do with a program called Cool Term. But that means that in order to load code on it, I can't use the built-in stuff in EasySXB that was reading Intel.hex files directly. I would have to type S to read an S record. Well, actually, before I do that, let me show you what the monitor looks like. So here's the various things you can do in the monitor. This is all built into the chip, actually. Let's see. S, and then I go up here and I say send text binary file. And then I send this file with the code in this .s28 Motorola format. And it looks like it doesn't return on its own, like it just kind of hangs there, but it seems to be okay if I press reset. So I'm gonna hit the reset key. All right, now notice we don't have anything showing. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to say G for go, and then 001000, which is the address of the code. And there's a bunch of A's, yay. Now, the main reason I'm making this video is to remind myself that the .hex Intel format, which is spit out by the assembler that we're using, is not what the monitor on the chip wants. It wants things in this Motorola.S28 format, which looks like this. So to convert that, I use this program called srec underscore cat. I think this came as part of some S record package I installed with Homebrew. I can't remember exactly. Anyway, I'm sure it's not hard to find. So you say srec underscore cat, file name dot hex, dash intel to let it know that it's this intel format dash o. Give it the file name that you want the converted file to be. That's with this dot s28. But to make it dot s28, you need this dash address dash length equals three. If you don't include this, it will give you an S record format, but it won't be S28, it'll be S something else. It took me a long time to figure out that this is what you needed to get the S28 format. Now, this is an earlier version of the board where I screwed up a couple of things and had to include some bodge wires to get it running. This is a newer version of the board which I think my student told me currently does not work, which confuses me because I'm pretty sure this did work at one point. So let me check it out. Oh no, this is very weird. Okay, I just hit reset, but it's having a freak out. Let me see what happens when I actually try running code. Huh. Okay, let's see what happens when I press this final zero to run the code. Huh, I do not think that is the desired behavior. Hmm. Before someone comments, this is some stuff I added that has to do with 
being able to send interrupts back to the processor. If I'm not using it, I shouldn't actually need these parts. Maybe I'm wrong about that. But I remember this board working is the thing that's confusing me. So next thing I'll probably do is go into the office and swap out all the chips just because that's easy enough and then start poking at it more.